Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about how I implemented a railway track mechanic in my recent game by a viewer's request. This will not be a straight up tutorial because I don't feel confident that the way I implemented it is optimal or even good for that matter, but I'm very curious as to whether anyone has a better way of going about implementing this. So the basic idea is as such. We have a railway tile set and we want the player to automatically follow a path along it. On railway splits, we want to be able to choose the direction that we're going in. So let's look at our tile set right now. We have 12 tiles total. Um, our cell size is 64 by 15. And the reason why it's so unusual is beca because we want to have five pixels in the center, five pixels above, above it, and five pixels below it. So that when we're splitting the tracks, our, uh, so our tiles have three distinct zones. You could do it differently, but this is how I decided to go with it. So let's see how we could go about creating a track. So we'll start out with a straight, a straight track. We'll split it in the center over here. Uh, we'll go, we'll go with split top and a split, split bottom. Um, we'll add a couple straight lines here and then we'll merge it like so. Merge top and merge bottom. So this is how we would create a railway with this tile set. Um, and the way I implemented the player going along this railway is we basically uh, check what tile we are currently on. So um, when you look in the bottom bottom left corner over here, we can see which tile we are currently looking at. This is straight, this is split center, split top, split bottom, and straight, merge, merge bottom, etc. And we can check what tile we're on um, via code. And depending on what tile we're on, um, in the player code, uh, we set our velocity. So here our velocity would be straight. Here our velocity um, would change uh, depending on whether we're going up or down. In, say, a down, a normal down rail, our velocity would just be down over here. So let's look at the player node. Um, like I said, don't judge me too hard. Uh, it's a little messy, but on our player node, um, in the player physics process, this is how the movement works. We get the cell position, uh, which is just this thing over here. So we want to be able to figure out which tau we are on, right? So we need that cell position. Um, we get the cell position by putting position X, which is just a position of the player, plus wheel offset X. Um, the reason why we need um, a wheel offset here is twofold, actually. Um, so let's take a look at the game. I've added a sprite of the player over here. Um, so when our player is moving along this path, over here as you can see it's not exactly uh, positioned in the center of the rail so we add a wheel offset in order to put tau checks uh, down and back a bit and the reason why it has to be uh, back is because our tau map uh, when we're moving the player on our tau map uh, we still want to keep moving forward over here so when we reach like this position say uh, we want to keep moving forward still, but our player is already on the on the tile where he is supposed to go up or down <coughs> And it just simplifies things that way. So our real offset, let's add a, a Note 2D over here uh, to kind of visualize it. Our real, set would, real offset would be kind of over here somewhere. So when we keep moving uh, the player Keep going forward and once he hits the tile over here, he starts moving either up or down. So uh, that way we recognize that we're on a tile where we're supposed to change Y position slightly later in order to, for it to make sense uh, visually. And the second uh, reason why the wheel offset exists, let me show you how it looks exactly. There is kind of a vertical portion to it depending on uh, whether we're moving up or down. 
uh, so we, we kind of want to set it off by a very tiny fraction when we're moving up um, we want to move it uh, move the wheel offset up by a very tiny fraction and we're moving when we're moving down we want to move the wheel offset down by a very tiny fraction and the reason why um, I did that is because of the way that movement works in the game so when we reach in a tile where we're supposed to move vertically we only want to move vertically enough to reach the other tile since we're always located in the center of the tile when we're not moving vertically which is 7.5 pixels we only want to move 7.5 pixels up we want to move 7.5 pixels over here and then move 7.5 pixels over here so that we go up by 15 pixels which is which is the difference between this um, rail and this rail the problem with not having a uh, differing wheel offset when we're going up and going down is when we reach this uh, position of 7.5 pixels we are technically in between these tiles so we don't we don't um, our player note doesn't recognize that it's on on a new tile for a quick illustration of what happens when we don't actually uh, change the wheel offset by a tiny margin when we're moving up you can see here that our train just stops in the middle of the rail instead of going up and moves forward because that's the default of direction for it move the offset up and that way once we hit this tile, we know that we're on a different tile and we can continue moving up. Position x plus we will offset divided by cell size x and position y plus we will offset divided by, by cell size y. Um, cell size is just the size of our um, each cell in our tile set and position y is the uh, position of the player themselves. So once we figure out what cell position we're in and we do that by we get the cell position uh, we get cell ID from the tile map we get uh, cell V cell position which is just a numeric representation of the cell and then we get a current tile uh, which is the string name of the cell which we can see over here um, dead end so we would get one of these from there and after that we check rail check rail basically alters our velocity depending on the tile that we are currently on and there are a couple um, of things that you might not understand currently like tile maxed and tile white y change and why we're saving the previous tile which i will explain shortly so tile maxed when we're moving on the tile map again there is a position where our player is already on the straight part of the tile but our tile didn't switch yet so we want to make sure that our player only moves by a certain amount of pixels on each tile by a maximum certain amount of pixels so in this case it will be 7.5 pixels on each tile we are tracking the amount of pixels we've already moved on this tile how wide a wide change is what it does as you can see if tile wide change is more than max tile change, which, which is 7.5, we set velocity to straight. And otherwise, uh, we just increment tile change by the velocity y times delta, which is, allows us to track how much we've moved vertically. We reset tile max on every tile change because we want to make sure that um, we are able to move. And once Tau change tau y change is maxed we set tau max to true so we don't we don't move vertically um, after that so like i said we set um we check for um the the tile that we're on we set our velocity depending on the tile that we're on and we set the wheel offset which just lets us recognize the next possible tiles correctly and the correct um uh, uh, manner and the reason why we're making sure that um, our previous tile is not the same as our current tile for this is because we don't want to reset uh, the tile Y change. So if we're on an upstart tile, the, the, the tile that goes straight first and goes up after, we want to make sure uh, we don't reset this because we want to, to go up exactly by 7.5 pixels 
and since we check rail every physics process when we're not dead we we run this code on every physics process where, when we're not dead and we're on these tiles and i think this is pretty much it i think i've covered everything there is to the movement in the game and to the rail system hopefully it kind of makes sense um i've been working on this game for like a month uh when i was making it so it all kind of makes sense in my head but um not sure how other people see it um if something's not clear or if i skipped over something that you wanted to um, know uh, let me know in the comments and again if you know a better way of implementing this kind of rail system i would appreciate it if you told me because it took me like a week to realize that i uh probably can't make use of paths and uh path 2 d at least at my current level of knowledge and so i kind of went with a less uh, nice implementation but it works and thank you very much for watching have a good day